Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So about a week ago, I posted here on the community tab a picture of New Orleans and I asked you guys to leave any questions that you guys might have about traveling with the kidney transplant. So today I'm gonna be answering those questions for you. But also, if you guys haven't checked that New Orleans post, I'll link it down below. It's a vlog of me giving my first speech. I was invited by Akibia Therapeutics to share my story. So it was an honor and a huge blessing to be able to share it with everybody there. So go check out that video if you guys haven't yet. But before we continue guys, I want to quickly introduce myself for anybody that is new here. My name is Cindy Flores and on my channel I share my kidney transplant journey as well as travel vlogs, testimony, and a ton of stuff. So if you are new, consider subscribing. So I have the questions. I'm kind of just going to read through the comments. I have them right here on my phone. Um, sorry, I'm like going there right now. Okay. So I'm going to answer first the ones that I got from the post and then I'll head over and answer the ones that I got from the story that I posted. Our first question is, is there any types of foods that you try to avoid when you are going to any specific country or state? Um, I don't try to avoid anything specific. I always do just try to avoid like the things that I am definitely not allowed to eat. For example, grapefruit or star fruit or raw meats, just anything like that. But I do try to avoid going to eat at places that look a little dirty. And what I mean by dirty is like flies everywhere, um, like landing on the food or like it doesn't look too clean around it. I try to like make smart choices. So what I like to do is go to a restaurant, read reviews about it, how the food was like cooked or uncooked, and see like the cleansiness of it. That's always helped me a lot, just checking out the reviews and seeing what other people think about the place. Our next question is by Rhonda. Do you wear a mask while flying on the plane? Okay, so I did in the beginning of my transplant journey. So three months after I received my transplant, I was allowed to travel. And I traveled to Honduras, so that was my first time on the plane with my transplant. So I wore a mask, I was super precautious, making sure, you know, all the people and all the germs weren't gonna like affect me. As I began to travel more and I had my transplant longer, I began to not wear it. So right now I don't wear a mask, but I do carry one on my carry-on just in case um, somebody next to me is sick or I hear somebody coughing consistently, so I do put on my mask. But at the moment, I don't. But I do recommend that if you are like recent with your transplant, definitely wear a mask because the doctors do advise that you wear your mask, especially in crowded areas. And you know, with the plane, it's crowded. On top of that, it's the same air ventilating throughout the flight. Our next question, getting through TSA from both leaving and arriving airports, especially international with all of the meds, so curious about the whole TSA screening process, etc. Because it is quite a lot of pills, if the trip tends to be longer. I am planning one soon and how to avoid being sick and what to do if you get sick overseas. Well, I first wanna send blessings your way on your travel. So this was one thing that I was worried about when I first started traveling, traveling with all those medications I'm carrying on because I was told and like I read some other things that you should bring like a list of medications and you should have your, your bottles um, for no one to say anything to you but I never had a problem. And I was also afraid like when I was traveling that they were gonna say something about like the organ. Like, you know when you step into the machine and they make you put your hands up like this and like it's the one that checks your whole body, like scans everything. I was always afraid that I was going to get stopped from having like the transplant. I don't know why I thought that. But what I did the first time I traveled, I got a note from my doctor stating that I had a transplant, kind of showed like the medical proof of it. Also, if you're gonna be carrying all those medications, what I do recommend if you are afraid that, you know, you can be stopped and be questioned, then definitely bring a list of your medications. Me personally, I've never been stopped and never had a problem and I've brought a ton of medications. What I usually do is just put my bag on the conveyor belt and it usually goes through, never get questioned about it. But just in case, do bring the list of medications to be more on the precautious side. 
And the second part of the question is how do I avoid being sick or what do I do if I get sick overboard? So when I'm traveling international, I always love to bring a ton of stuff. I have a video, I'll link it down below, where I show you guys like what I bring when I'm traveling. And that's usually what I always bring. It has everything that I need. It has my Neosporin in case I get cut. It has my Tylenol, my Benadryl, just anything that I might need in case of an emergency. But I've never been sick overseas, so I don't know exactly what I would do. Um, one time I started getting a little sick when I was in Honduras. I started to get like a fever and I did go to their pharmacy, got some medication and it went away like instantly. So what I personally would just recommend is just packing, being ready for any type of scenario. And I've always told myself if I ever got like severely sick um, in a different country that I would like the minute I felt like deep down inside like that feeling of, oh, I'm going to be hospitalized or I could just feel, you know how your body sometimes warns you that something's about to happen or you don't feel okay that you need to do something about it. I've always told myself if I am somewhere that I'm going to fly back to the United States as quickly as possible because... I don't want to risk it, especially this transplant. I want to have it as long as possible. I want it to be healthy and strong. But definitely just be prepared and also be very cautious of what you're eating. Make sure you're getting enough rest. Don't overstrain your body. Um, walking too much, especially like when you go to Europe or places like that where you're constantly having to walk. Just definitely be prepared for anything. Our next question from Light Queen 212 yay first comment please heart this that's sweet of you um how do you organize everything and do you make a buju spread i don't know exactly what that is or a list okay so i am so used to traveling all the time so it's kind of like second nature if that makes sense um so what i first do is i always pack my clothes as in like my shirts my skirts stuff like that and then i later start packing like all the toiletries so like my medications, my toothbrush, all that. So like I said before, I'll link the video exactly where you guys can see the whole transplant aspect of it, of what I pack. So hopefully that video, you can find it helpful, check it out. So that's usually the way I do it. I first just pack all my clothes and then I pack my toiletries and my medications all after. Because I feel like the little things, it's just easier to just grab and just kind of like put on top of your stuff, that makes sense. But I don't make like a list or anything specific. Um, I did in the beginning like things that I had to remember to bring. But now it's just so normal to me I guess. It's kind of just easier and it's like more natural to me. Um, but one thing that I always like and I'm always like double checking is that I bring my medications. Because I always have that fear that like I might forget my medications or I might lose them somewhere. So always pack that in your carry-on. Don't forget. Our next question from Cecilia Gutierrez. If a person sitting close to you on the plane is coughing slash sneezing, can you request stewards to change seats? Do you pack cough and cold medicine just in case? What brand cough and cold medicine is allowed for transplant patients? Do you, sorry, these, there's a ton of questions. So actually I'm going to stop right there and just answer them in part. So I've never sat next to anybody that has been consistently coughing and sneezing. If anything, that would probably be I would probably be the person that's constantly coughing and sneezing, but I'm sure that if you are like next to somebody that is, I'm sure you can ask the flight attendant and they would easily just switch your seat or have even maybe somebody near you if they want to swap seats with you, that shouldn't be a problem. And mentioning your reason and most of the people should understand, especially having like a transplant, once you tell them, a lot of people have compassion on that sense and they would probably switch seats with you. But it has never happened to me personally. The second part of the question is, do I pack cough and cold medicine just in case? So I do pack medication just in case. And the brand that I use, which you do ask me after that, is Tylenol. I've always just stuck to Tylenol, even before um, having my transplant, because this is the only like cough and cold medicine that doesn't really affect your kidney. So that's why I use Tylenol. Kind of just, I don't know, I'm just used to that one. The other part is, do I get my yearly flu shot? Okay, so this is a little complicated, guys, and you can agree, you can disagree. Everybody's gonna have their own opinions to this, but I've always been up to date with my shots and like my flu shots, 
and everything until I got my transplant. Um, when I got my transplant, I decided not to get my flu shot. And I know that might sound like super risky or anything, but I wanted to see if it made a difference for me. If I like opt out to get my flu shot, if I would feel better during the winter or during flu season. Um, because every single time I would get the flu shot or any types of vaccines, I would always feel super sick after. I would constantly get fevers, get coughs, um, and it was just super uncomfortable. And my daughter as well, every time I would take her to a pediatrician and she would get her flu shot, she would always have problems like, you know, having constant colds and having fevers always. So once I got my transplant, I decided to get no more flu shots. And I've noticed it's been two years and a half or so since I haven't got my flu shot and I haven't gotten sick at all. It's a huge blessing because I know people that did get the flu and these are people with like healthy immune systems and I still haven't gotten any. And I feel just a lot better. Um, my winters, usually I'm always sick and it hasn't been like that. I haven't been sick in a while. The same with my daughter. Ever since I stopped um, giving her the flu shot, she's been super healthy. She hasn't had like her regular colds and stuff. And the reason, if you guys are wondering like why I decided to opt out, it was because I wanted to like check for myself how my body would personally react. And also I kind of did a little bit of like research or digging about it. And I kind of have my own point of view on that. Sorry to flood you with questions. Cindy, I'm four months post-transplant and have been in the hospital twice for infection. I am planning a trip to Italy next year. After I am one year post-transplant, I am terrified of catching a virus or infection or getting sick in a foreign country. Any suggestions you can make to avoid getting sick while traveling will be really appreciated. Thank you. Um, so I first want to say congrats on being four months. I know how exciting it is. So. You mentioned that you had two infections since your transplant and I've always mentioned before on all my videos that the first year of transplant is the hardest year and I'm speaking from my experience. This was when I was the sickest, I had an infection before and it was just like tons of things that happened my first year of transplant. I broke up into hives and so much more. So I understand why you could be nervous. At the same time, it could also just be like a new thing since your body is just now getting adapted to this transplant that it's gonna have its ups and its downs. It's kind of getting used to also the immunosuppressant. So you have to keep in mind that your body's going through a lot of changes and that could be the reason why I'm constantly getting sick because I was constantly in and out of the hospital. But my suggestion would be try to be as healthy as possible when you're eating, make the right food choices, go eat at the right places. Um, I've actually been to Italy with my transplant and I didn't have any problems but definitely pack everything that you might need in case of anything but I hope you enjoy Italy have the best time and try not to stress too much about your transplant definitely always keep that in mind because it's a part of you it's something there your health is important but don't try to overstress because when we begin to overthink and overstress it actually begins to reflect on us physically our next question if you can teleport to any part of the world which would it be that's a really good question, guys. Um, I don't know. There's so many places that I kind of want to travel to that I don't know. But I guess I would have to say um, maybe Australia or Thailand. Here's a couple of places. I'm not even just going to name one. I have a couple of places. So Australia, Thailand, um, Switzerland. Yeah, I would teleport to somewhere like that. Or like the Fiji Islands, somewhere like tropical. Switzerland because it's more like an adventurous, kind of like hiking vibe, kind of like, you know, wintry fall. But I don't know, one of those places I would teleport myself to. My next question, how much medication do you take? So I'll link the video down below where I mention all the medications that I'm taking. It is a lot, so I don't want to just like mention everything on the top of my head because you guys are going to get bored of me just mentioning all my medications. But I'll link the video if you guys want to see it below. And our next question is from Lydia. How do you choose what to pack? So it really depends on where you're traveling to. For example, if you're going to travel to somewhere warm, then you're going to definitely want to pack your sunscreen and clothes that is going to keep you fresh. And if you're going to somewhere cold, obviously you want to bundle up and pack clothes that is going to keep you warm. But I always pack the same when it comes to any transplant things. I always just have my go-to stuff. I actually always just keep everything in a little pouch, the pouch that you guys see in that video that I posted. And I kind of just like scan, making sure everything's in there and then like 
pack it. Okay guys, so those are all the questions that I have for you guys. If I didn't answer your question, leave it down below and I will comment right back to you answering it. I hope you guys have a blessed and beautiful day. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Share it to anybody that you guys might know with the canoe transplant or planning to travel soon with one. So thank you guys so much once again and I'll see you guys in my next video.